really, really pleased to have Josephine with us this evening. A big thank you for joining us. Um, I'll start by doing a quick intro to me for anyone that doesn't know me. So I am Abby and I am one of the co-founders of the Fertility Circle. And for those of you who don't know about the Fertility Circle, we are a recently launched app and we really aim to support um, anyone and empower people to make the right fertility choices for them. And we do that through brilliant events like this one and um, lots of great content and of course the fabulous community of people. So if you haven't downloaded the app, then please do. You can go and search for Fertility Circle in the App Store or Play Store to find us. And the other thing that we do is we are um, supported by a really incredible bunch of more than 40 resident experts. Josephine is one of those brilliant experts and they support us in the app, um, answering questions from all of our users, providing articles and also hosting events such as these. So thank you to Josephine for, for taking the time out to do that with us. Um, and Josephine is a meditation teacher based in LA, but uh, she offers support virtually to an international client base. She provides private meditation sessions, personalized fertility recordings and fertility mindfulness um, workshops. And really the aim of all of that is to um, help people uh, get coping strategies for stress and anxiety reduction for anyone who is trying to conceive. She's also had her own incredible journey um, and that involves now being a mum to five via IVF, surrogacy and adoption. So really an incredible journey. And if you want to read any more about that, Josephine has shared some really wonderful articles that you can read in the app as well. So thank you, Josephine. So today we're going to talk about a bit about the basics of meditation and mindfulness and how they can support you on your fertility journey. Then we will answer any questions from you guys on that subject. And finally, we're gonna end with a brilliant fertility meditation. Just I think 15 minutes of a guided fertility meditation, right Josephine? So, and the other thing is hold on till the end because I will share a special offer from Josephine for all of you guys. So hold on and I will share that with you right at the end. So let's, I'll check whether anyone else is joining now and then I think we can kick off. Anything that you want to start with Josephine? No, I think that was great. Thank you so much for the kind introduction, Abby. I really appreciate it. Um, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing about the basics of meditation and mindfulness and the benefits of it for one's fertility journey and and debunk some, some myths on meditation that many people have and and prevent people from, from giving it a try. So looking forward to today's conversation. Amazing, thanks Josephine. And I must say that meditation is really, really fundamental, I think, to my fertility journey as well. And I'm not sure I would have got it, got through it without meditation. So it was a really, really big part of my journey and also now of my life, um, full stop. So yeah, I'm excited to be able to share this kind of stuff with other people as well. I love hearing that. I love hearing when people have actually, you know, um, incorporated and benefited from it. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really an amazing tool. I think if, um, if people can get into it. So I guess maybe we can start by talking about what is mindfulness basically and how is it beneficial to someone's fertility journey? Yeah, so basically mindfulness is just a, an awareness of the present moment or whatever your point of focus may be. So it can be anything from your breath to your mantra, which is basically a phrase that you use to keep you grounded in the moment. It can be something in nature, or it can be the music that you're listening to. But essentially, it comes down to being able to tune in to what the point of focus is and get rooted in the present moment. Amazing. Thank you. Sounds like it should be an easy thing, right? <laughs> um, but the actual practice of it is so much harder than it sounds, I think. Right. It does sound, it does, when put like that, it does sound like it's super easy to attain. But the thing is, it actually can be quite easy to be able to do and incorporate. You know, a lot of people think one of the big um, myths out there is that you have to do a meditation and be mindful for a really long time, like 30 minutes, an hour. And that's not really true because you can achieve the same thing just by doing it for a few minutes a day if you're just starting out. So it can be something as simple as three minutes 
where you're just focused and paying attention to how your breath is moving in and out of your body. And the, the way that works, the way that it benefits you is that, so just to, just to give a little scientific background, you know, we have the autonomic nervous system and it controls all of these processes in our body that just happen. Um, and so it's, it's split up into two. We have the sympathetic nervous system and then parasympathetic and sympathetic that controls our responses to, to dangers in our life. And it, you may have heard of it. It's called fight or flight. And that's when we get super stressed out. And these days it doesn't have to be, you know, back in the day, it was a tiger who was attacking you, but now it's a simple email that you get on your, that you receive um, maybe from your fertility doctor and instantly it sets you off and you're all of a sudden feeling like you're in a state of stress, like you're being attacked. And that's how your brain sort of understands it in that moment. And you'll start to feel things, physical things like your heart racing, you may sweat, your blood pressure is starting to increase, and then you start to feel anxious and overwhelmed. And so by going back to that idea of just practicing for a few minutes a day, just witnessing your breath, you're practicing that ability to get into that moment of calm when you're, you're suddenly triggered. And the beauty of your breath is that we just, we all take it for granted, but it's so powerful because that breath is that signal in your brain that tells you, okay, you're not, you're not, your life isn't in danger. You're moving from a state of stress into that parasympathetic nervous system, which is called rest and digest. So you're moving into a state of calm and that's all triggered the moment you take a deep breath. And so you can imagine if you're doing it just for a couple minutes a day, just making that a habit that you're able to train your brain to switch over from that state of stress into a state of calm. Amazing, that's, that's really helpful and really good to hear the science behind it um, because I think that really helps people understand how it makes a difference in your life. Um, so really, really good to get that perspective. Thank you. Um, and can you tell us a bit about, say we've never tried this before, um, what are some of the key points we should really, really be thinking about when we're getting started? Yeah, so definitely that first tip about keeping it short. You know, um, one thing to, when you're starting a new habit or starting a new routine is to make it as successful as possible for yourself to incorporate it into your already busy life, right? And so, so keep it short. Another thing is to lean into some sort of help. So there, we're lucky and fortunate in this environment that there's so many, like with Fertility Circle app, there's so many other apps that can help you with meditation. I mean, I, for myself, I offer free meditation on my website that you can try, but it can be really daunting when you're first trying it out and you don't know how to do it. You don't know if you're doing it right. So it's helpful in that instance to lean in and get help with those free videos or the, the free trials for these apps. And then another thing is that you can do it anywhere. You don't need a fancy setup with statue and the water fountain and the pillow. You don't need any of that. I try to do it anywhere that's quiet when I can, when I can fit it in. So I've been known to do it in my closet or in my car, just wherever you can do it. And then another tip would be to tie it to an existing ritual that you already have, because that will set you up for success even more. So for example, every morning you wake up and you do a certain thing, for example, brushing your teeth. If you decide then that you will do that two minute meditation, either before or after you brush your teeth, then you've set yourself up for success. You know that you're going to be able to do it because you always brush your teeth in the morning. And then perhaps the last uh, piece of advice that I'd like to impart upon people who are on the fence about whether or not to give it a shot is that you are going to have thoughts. I, that's probably the most common thing that people say to me is that they can't do it because they have so many thoughts running through their head and they can't turn off their mind. I myself even said that to my friend years ago when she was trying to convince me to meditate. And here's, you know, um, spoiler alert is that we have between 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts running through our head. So that's like a thought every 1.2 seconds. So you're not going to turn it off. Even the best of meditators, like my teacher, he admits that he he's unable to do it. But what you're 
trying to achieve instead is, is this dance between stillness and silence in your mind, and then the acknowledgement of a thought. And in the beginning, it we like to just, you know, when you're first trying it out, you'll get caught up in that thought. But what you're eventually trying to do is to be able to acknowledge the thought, but not hold on to it and allow it to float back out as easily as it came in so that you can return back to that point of focus, that mindfulness that you're trying to achieve. And then after that, it's just this dance that you'll be doing back and forth. And the beauty of this is that when you are in everyday life, for example, going through your fertility journey, it's so applicable in that time because so often we will be interrupted in a conversation that we're having, perhaps with our fertility doctor, and perhaps you get news that you weren't expecting, and maybe it's not the best of news. All of a sudden, your mind is now distracted by that information. But by practicing mindfulness, you're then able to come back to that moment where you're speaking with your doctor, for example, and, and be able to engage in that conversation and be present to what he or she is saying so that you can come up with a plan. And so that is how I like to kind of talk to people about mindfulness and meditation and how it really can be helpful to you, not just when you're sitting in silence, but in everyday life. So many useful things there. I mean, um, I know, it's a lot. <laughs> I would really pick up on, you know, the thing about the thoughts, because when I first started meditating, that was exactly my experience as well. Um, I was frustrated because I had all these thoughts and, um, you know, I, I thought that it was supposed to be silence and that's what I was trying to achieve. And when I realized, actually, that's not what I, that's not what I'm aiming for. And a thoughtful meditation is, is fine, actually. That's what I need today, maybe. Um, that really helped me to actually kind of just surrender into um, whatever the meditation would bring. And so... Yes, I think that's so important for people starting out. Um, and then I really like those tips around routine and building it into your day um, and, and also building it into everyday life, because I suppose that's one of the real main reasons we're doing it, right? So that actually in our daily life, we can experience things um, with kind of more ease um, and, uh, and yeah, get through things a little bit more easily, I suppose. So yeah, really, really helpful tips. Thank you. Yeah, I liked your point about being flexible and and doing what sort of what your mood calls for. Uh, that's another thing that is a helpful tip to have is that you know we wake up feeling different every day, and so every day will call for a different type of meditation. So definitely go out there and try different things and see what sticks for you. It may be different. You may want you know, a musical meditation one day, but then another day will be really hard where you need to hear someone's voice empower you through whatever difficulties you had that day. So, you know, be flexible in this process of trying out something new and really tune in to how you're feeling. And the benefit of it's so circular because the more you become mindful, the more you are aware of yourself and the better able you are to understand what you need and how to care for yourself. And in that same vein, just one more tip is throughout this entire process of, of even just your fertility journey, but also with incorporating meditation and a new habit is to be compassionate to yourself. You know, we are often just so hard on ourselves when we're trying new things and we're, as we're going along in this, this path to parenthood that we have a lot of negative self-talk and a lot of these ideas of how we should be performing and how it should be. And there's no should be, it's just how it is. And to really um, just accept how it is happening for you, and you, as you mentioned, and being vulnerable and accepting that how this meditation is going for you. So be compassionate. Yeah, absolutely. So important right now. Um, this, there's so much blame, I think, that people can feel. Um, and yeah, I think that compassion, if people can can get that, is, is such, a, such a helpful thing to try and remind ourselves of. Um, so speaking about fertility, I suppose, um, how would you say that someone should try and use meditation and mindfulness in their infertility journey? Yep, that's a, a great question. So um, if I could just backtrack mm. just of the benefits of why one should use it in their fertility journey. Um, you know, I already mentioned before about 
being able to establish an awareness of the present moment. And I gave that example of being like in a conversation with your doctor. So when you're able to incorporate mindfulness and meditation, or even just mindfulness in a situation without doing a meditation, you're able to be in that moment and engage in it. So often in life in general, but also with fertility struggles, we're caught up in all the things of the past, all the things that didn't work out, all the cycles that didn't work out. And we're just thinking about that. And if we're not there, then we're in the future. And we're thinking about, okay, what is going to happen if this cycle doesn't work out and I'm going to have to do this and I'm going to have to do that. And you're never really in that present moment. So the benefit of doing meditation as you go along in your fertility journey is that benefit of that presence and being able to to engage in the moment. Another thing that we've already talked about is that it can bring you from a state of stress and overwhelm and anxiety into that state of calm, which we all need outside of fertility, just in life in general, in this pandemic and everything else in between. It's helpful to be able to know how to move yourself from that one state into another state of, of relaxation. And in doing so, the other benefit of fertility meditation is it gives you some semblance of control. And I know for myself, when I was going through years of infertility, that that was the one thing that I felt like it was slipping through my fingers. I, I didn't have any control over my situation anymore. And in the process, I was losing sight of myself. And when you're able to recognize that you have control over your breath, which thereby controls you know, your state of stress or peace, that is one way that you're able to control your situation. And you know, there are so many things throughout this process that we have zero control over. So it's helpful to let go of those things. It's easy to say, I know, but then to lean into the things that you do have control over. And so it can be things like your diet and your, you know, how you, um, your supplements and all these things, but it can also be your, your breath and your mindset. And the beauty of mindfulness is that it's, it allows us to not just control that breath, but, and control our stress, but also can benefit our mindset because now we're able to shift into a state of positivity from negativity. And, and then the last point about the benefit of fertility mindfulness and using it is something I touched upon before in that, you know, through this process, our light gets dimmed and it just happens with every single experience that we encounter throughout this process. You know, it really beats us down and we start to feel diminished in our value and our self-worth and our inner power and our inner light gets dimmed. And so when you're able to do mindfulness, you're able to really sit even for just two minutes to sit in that moment and reconnect to yourself. And every day, just have a moment of peace with yourself and to just listen to maybe not the words that you know, you're saying to yourself, but just listening to how your body is feeling, how your mind is feeling, where you are emotionally. And so those are the many benefits that you can receive when doing fertility mindfulness. And so to your question then about how one would do that, you know, you can, like I said, do it on a daily basis where you're doing it just for a couple minutes a day, whether you're following an app or just following your breath, moving in and out. And then a lot of my clients like to do it right before a big moment. So for example, right before an IUI, an egg retrieval, an embryo transfer during their two week wait, which can be so nerve wracking. They'll, that's when they'll incorporate a one-on-one -on -one session with me. And, um, and then, you know, you can attend workshops and things like that. But those are, those are times when it's helpful to really just get that extra boost of support um, as you're going through, you know, your journey. Great, thank you. That's really helpful to hear. And, and sort of nice how you can mix it up, like you say, so you can have that practice. It's that daily kind of ritual and that returning to your breath or whatever you want to do. And then you can kind of um, pump it up for once for a better word in those difficult moments. So for me during the two week waits, that was when I felt that I really, really needed it. You know, so I would then spend longer meditating on those days um, just because I felt that that's what really kept me calm and kept me going through, through those days. Um, so yes, it's it, like good to hear that you can use it in those different ways. 
Yeah, I love that you used it during your two-week wait. I've heard many of you know my workshop clients and then my other clients who use it that um, it helped them not pick up that drugstore, that pharmacy pregnancy test during the two-week wait, which you know, uh, which is a testament to the fact that they were able to use not just meditation and mindfulness, but also other tools in their toolkit to help keep them grounded in the present moment and not spiraling into worry and and all of that. Yeah, and the endless kind of Google searches that you can end up doing, right? Oh. Even though you, of course, know the symptoms of pregnancy, but you just need to Google them one more time just to double check. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so helpful for that sort of stuff. Um, amazing, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I would definitely say um, I'd encourage people to go and check out Josephine's, um, all of her free meditations, because they're really, really incredible. And there's lots of different ways, obviously, that you can work with Josephine. But just as a starting point, some of those meditations are absolutely fabulous. Um, but before we kind of head into a, a meditation, are there any questions from the audience um, that you would like to check in with Josephine? You can either feel free to unmute yourself and um, put your video on or not. Otherwise, you can also write them in the chat box and I can ask them for you, whatever, whatever suits you. We'll see if anyone's got anything. One of the things that I was going to check um, was, oh, hey, and we've got a question coming through here. Okay, so that's a good question. Do you recommend pregnancy visualization meditations? Oh, I love that question. Yes. So one of the things that I have done for clients um, during the two-week wait is to do a pregnancy visualization. And I know this is tough uh, because, you know, over the years, cycle after cycle, you start to build up these walls of protection around your heart, your emotions, because you're afraid of, of being let down again. And you're afraid of what those emotions will do to you if you really sort of let hope in and, and get your hopes up for this cycle, right? So one thing that has, has been helpful to a number of clients is to have this guided visualization meditation that they use during that two week waits and during their first trimester that they can use to keep them rooted in that moment and to, to let hope in really. And, and so we'll, what we'll do is use a mantra, like I'm filled with love and life. You are filled with life un unless you are told otherwise you, you had your transfer. And so, you know, um, to really, to believe in that. And it, like I said, it is scary. So, that's why a guided visualization meditation where you have the words to really support you and help you through that really vulnerable moment can be really beneficial. Yeah, thank you. I know it's a scary one, isn't it, as well? I certainly use that during, during my IVF and um, it feels really, um, you feel really vulnerable, don't you, and exposed at first when you do it. But actually, I think when you get into the practice of it, it kind of gets easier and gets easier and, and then feels more natural. And then when it's feeling more natural, then that's when you're sort of filled with that, that feeling and you know it's kind of working, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it was a really helpful thing for me as well. Um, we have another question coming through. What would be the best tips to approach a frozen embryo transfer in terms of meditation or frequency? Yeah, no, that's a, that is a great question. Um, so in terms of best tips to approach uh, frozen embryo transfer. So I would establish just a toolkit, as I had mentioned before, a toolkit that you can use to draw upon whenever you start to feel overwhelmed when you start to spiral into a state of negativity, which, you know, just happens constantly. It's a, it's a roller coaster. I remember from my years of doing it back to back that um, you are just in a flood of emotions. So if you can have a toolkit, whether it's an actual physical one, someone told me that they created a physical toolkit that they had so that they can just peruse through it versus having a mental one. I have a mental one. Um, but having that sort of handy, so that way, anytime you start to feel overwhelmed, you can pull something out to help bring you back to baseline. And so as you get closer to that transfer, you know, I know that stakes are riding so high on what you're about to do. So if you can really just get yourself back to that, that level point, then it helps anything that's about to happen, that you're able to process it 
in a better way. And, you know, I like to describe it kind of like a boat that's floating on the water. And when you're able to utilize all these tools and also incorporate this new added tool of fertility, mindfulness, and meditation, as the waves get bigger, um, rather than having all that water come in and possibly sink your boat and overwhelm you and engulf you with all those emotions, instead, you're able to ride those waves. And you're doing it because you're incorporating all the tools that you have and all of these techniques and strategies to help keep you afloat and allow you to ride those waves. So, um, you know, if journaling works for you, find always try new things so that way you can pull out something that will work for you that day. And like I said before, it can change daily because of how you're feeling. But going into a frozen embryo transfer, I would definitely come up with like a plan of things that I would do maybe a couple times a day, even setting uh, reminders in your calendar. Like if you block things out, I'm a total planner. I used to be a, a, um, an event planner. And so if I can add it into my calendar and it pops up with a reminder, then I know for sure that it will happen. And then I'm not scrambling. Then it's not me sort of... Um, um, just cleaning up a fire versus me just being preventative and allowing for moments throughout my day where I can take care of myself and just reroute and ground back into the present moment so that I don't have to extinguish a huge fire later on that day. So calendar reminders like I've received for this, um, for this event was just so helpful, really was helpful for me to be able to do as I'm going through like big moments. Um, such as a, an embryo transfer. Yeah, great tip. And, and kind of making sure it happens somehow when it's written down, right? It's, um, you, you stick to it, you're more likely to stick to it. So it's a great thing. Yeah. Um, and, and in terms of that toolkit, so could that be, um, you know, obviously some sort of meditation practice might go in there. You might have a gratitude journal or just a journal where you're kind of journaling thoughts. Might you have things like, okay, I'm going to try and get outside every day for a mindful walk, for example, or actually, you know, I'm going to have a bubble bath a few times a week or whatever. Is, is, is it all those sorts of things that you know that nourish you and, and help you feel good? Yes. The, those are great examples. I love the one of going outside um, just because nature can really reset you. You know, nature doesn't have... Um, there are no preconceived notions with nature, unlike with people. So if you, you know, you go and talk to a friend, you might have baggage with this friend and it, it creeps in as you're speaking to them. But when you go outside, you just look at the sun, the sky, or root your toes in the ground, you just get this energy and this calming effect from it. And then you can go back and do what you need to do for your day. But yes, definitely things like that are at my disposal. If you're a journaler or if you like to do your gratitudes on your phone, like leaving yourself a voice memo, that's great. Or having um, typing it in, into an email to yourself, that's always great. And then having a list of people that you can talk to, whether that's people that you've met through the app or people that you've met through the online fertility community. It's always super helpful to talk to someone who knows what you're going through. I, myself, when I was going through it, no one was pregnant. We were the first to get married, first to try kids. And so I didn't have anyone to lean on back then. And so that's why I love having these communities because now, even though you've never actually met this person, they can be, provide you with the most support. Um, and so, having things like that planned in are, are super helpful. Great, great examples, thank you. Um, I think uh, there's, there's not any more questions coming through, but one, one quick last one from me before we can kick off with the meditation. If people are um, just starting this and they haven't meditated before, and you know they've got say a frozen cycle coming up or an IVF cycle coming up, um, like, how long would it would it ha would it take for them to sort of feel a difference and to, to make it worthwhile if you see what I mean? Um, and should they just get going today, even if their cycle is next week? You know. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Yeah, um, I was going to do like we can do a quick sixteen second breath right now, and you'd feel the difference in, after just sixteen seconds. But we're going to meditate anyway, so you'll feel it then. But it can be something as just in one day where you start to feel. Uh, the benefits of it. Like when I first started many years ago, I felt it instantly, which is what hooked me onto doing it. Because like I said, 
when you're feeling stressed and you're feeling overwhelmed, you have all those physical side effects from it. And when you start to slow down your breath, you're instantly moving yourself into that calmer state. And so you'll feel it right away. And then over time, uh, then you are able to just build upon that, just like we would if we were learning a new language, a new sport. It just takes practice and creating that habit. And then that neural pathway is just getting stronger and stronger in your brain so that when you need to access your calm and need to get out of stress, you're able to do it much quicker. Um, so if you have a cycle coming up and it's in a few days, you can still start today to be able to help get you in that right frame of mind and hopefully, you know, cut the edge off of any stress that you may be feeling, but then it serves you because then you're able to continue doing it throughout your waiting period. So there's never, um, it's never too late, I guess would be my quick answer. Great. Good to know. Thank you. And, and just one last question coming through. Uh, are there any websites or books that you would recommend? Um, any books? My, the books that I would recommend are just um, meditation based. Uh, one of my favorite ones is called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And he, he just, I mean, I loved this book. It was transforming for me as I was going throughout my meditation teacher training journey because that's where he really honed in the idea that um, the present moment is all we have and the importance of using the positive thoughts in our brain versus listening to all the negative thoughts and how everything else outside of life before and after they don't exist anymore what's existing right now is this current moment um, so for me that was life-changing websites um i like all of the in terms of meditation you know you can look up um, insight timer that is a great website that has a lot of free meditations on there so that you don't have to go into um, an app per se and, and start to pay when you're kind of on the fence and you're trying to learn what you like. Um, and then on my own website, there are a number of free meditations so that you can give it a shot, especially if you're new to meditation, they're all basic ones that will help you learn all the essentials. Amazing, thank you. I'm just gonna put your website in the chat so people can see it. Um, and the other one was Insights Timer and the power, whoops, the power of now. Oh, great. Thanks for putting that up there. There you go. Um, amazing, thank you. All great recommendations. Fab. Um, any final questions from anyone? Otherwise, I'll kind of hand over to you, Josephine, to kick us off with the meditation. Can't see anything coming through, so I think, I think we're probably good to go, Josephine. Okay, well, but before we get started, before I turn on the music, um, just know that you can sit down, you can lie down, whatever feels good to you. And then with that idea of thoughts, so when a thought occurs, if you are a visual person, a great way of dealing with thought is to imagine yourself putting it either on a cloud and gently pushing it away, or you can visualize yourself putting it on a leaf that's floating on a, a body of water and pushing it away. Now, if you're not more, if you're not visual, and you can just silently say to yourself, I acknowledge you and I will, I will attend to you later. And then returning back to your point of focus. And just know again that it will keep happening throughout. You'll remember something like a grocery item that you need or you'll hear a noise or feel a sensation. In that moment, be kind to yourself, be gentle, and then use whatever strategy works for you to just gently let the thought go and then return back to our point of focus which for today will be our breath and a mantra so with that being said i'm going to turn on the music and just hopefully you can hear it let's see here Is that okay? Yeah, okay, great. So whenever you feel ready, um, I invite you to get as comfortable as possible. You can remain seated, close your eyes. I mean, um, lie down and then whenever you feel ready, close your eyes.
And we will begin to come into this moment by taking two deep breaths. Breathing in through your nose. And gently letting it go. Once again, a long, slow, deep breath in through your nose. And gently letting it go. And now just allow your breath to return to a pace that feels comfortable, natural to you. Remembering that everything outside of this moment, all of the obligations, all of the people, remain exactly where they need to be. They're gently fading in the background. You can return to all of those things after this moment that you have set aside for your self-care. Now begin to witness the ebb and flow of your breath as it's moving in and out of your body. As you inhale, notice the gentle rise of your belly and your chest. And feel the expansion of air within you. breath that you take in this moment is nourishing you and re-energizing you. And as you inhale, imagine that you're filling yourself up with positivity and lightness and energy. As you exhale, begin to witness how your body is melting into the ground beneath you. With every exhale, use it as an opportunity to release any tension or stress or heavy emotions that may be weighing you down. breath is a powerful tool that we all have at our disposal. You can always use this breath to help us when we're feeling overwhelmed and stressed. Remembering that you can control your breath and your ability to tap into your inner calm. So let's 
let's work on our breath for these next few moments, allowing us to really make it a lot deeper. So placing one hand on your belly and another over your heart. And on your next inhale, I invite you to start that inhale from your belly. And what you'll do is as you inhale, pushing out your belly and expanding it. When you feel like you can no longer put in any air in your belly, then moving up, inhale, into your chest. And once you've filled up with all the air that you can, slowly exhaling out that breath, starting with your chest, and moving down to your belly. And now just repeat this deep belly breath at your own pace for five more times keeping count on your own. And as you do so, witness how your hands are slowly rising as you take that deep belly breath. Notice that hand on your belly moving up and then following right after the hand that's over your chest also moving upwards as you take that inhale. Allow your breath to return back to that natural rhythm. You can allow your hands to fall back on the side of your body. And we'll continue to witness how the inhale and exhale are flowing in and out of your body. And in this moment, let's just take some time to tune in to how our bodies are feeling. Noticing if you're holding on to any areas of tension or stress. Common areas of tightness that we hold on to would be our hands, Perhaps you have them closed in fists right now. Allow them to softly open. Perhaps your shoulders are raised up by your ears, allowing them to soften down as you exhale. Perhaps your jaws clench tightly. On your next exhale, open your mouth slightly to release the jaw. Perhaps the corners of your eyes, your forehead, and your brow are all furrowed. So allow them to soften in this moment. And see if you're holding on to any other areas of tension in your body. Then use the power of your breath to breathe into those spaces and then 
using the exhale to let go of that tension that you may have found. Let's use the power of our breath, in particular our exhale, to allow ourselves to just let go. On your next exhale, letting go of all the stress from your journey. On your next exhale, letting go of all the expectations that you have put on yourself and your process. As you exhale once again, allowing yourself to let go of any sadness and disappointment that you carry around silently. Just let it all go so you can make room for more strength, for more love, for more positivity, all of the goodness that you deserve because you are an amazing individual. Know that any emotions that pop up during this time, all of those feelings are, are valid and worthy of your acknowledgement. You have created a safe space here. So give yourself permission to be vulnerable to these feelings and take a deep breath in. then let it go. And as you take another deep breath in, allow yourself to fill up with courage. And feeling the courage trickling out to the far corners of your body. Breathing in the words, I am enough. Breathing in the words, I am strong. Now reminding yourself on this next breath, I am brave. On your next inhale, I am resilient.
inhaling again, I am calm. Next inhale, breathe in all of these words, allowing them to take root into the very core of your being. You are worthy, you are enough, you are strong, brave, resilient, calm, and you are love. And just for the next few minutes, allow these words to float in the back of your mind. Allowing them to take root within. Whichever of those phrases resonated most with you, perhaps focusing on those words as your mantra. And when you hear my voice again, just remain gently with your eyes closed as I guide you out of the meditation. I am enough. I am strong, brave, resilient, calm, and I am love. Breathe in those words one more time and allow it to really take root within you so that as you go along your journey, whenever you need that gentle reminder of all of these things that you are, you can simply take a deep breath in to reconnect with that light and power within. And so just as we began, we will end our meditation with two deep breaths, breathing in through your nose and gently letting it out of your mouth. One more time, a long, slow, deep breath in through your nose and gently letting it go. And to begin to come back into the space that you are in, just start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Perhaps stretch your neck from side to side. And whenever you feel ready, no rush, gently open your eyes. I hope you all feel so much more relaxed and calm than when we first began just 15 minutes ago and allow the feelings that you cultivated here of peace to just ripple throughout the rest of your evening, your day, and hopefully the remainder of your week.
Thank you, Josephine. That was really lovely, thank you. <laughs> that was lovely, thank you so much. Um, I'm certainly feeling relaxed and ready for bed now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> thank you, that was really, really wonderful. Um, and so big thanks to everyone for joining. I just wanted to quickly mention um, before, before you head off that um, Josephine has really, really kindly shared a um, special offer for anyone attending today. So um, the, that's for a 30% discount on her private fertility meditations um, with a two week wait meditation recording. Um, so if anyone fancies taking her up on that offer, I popped the, um, the code in the chat thread just there and the code is F circle. And I've also popped um, Josephine's website in there as well. So I would really recommend, yeah, giving that a go if it's something you want to uh, consider. Having that extra bit of support can be super helpful um, in kind of just starting up that practice. So yeah, um, take advantage if you can. And if you want to um, check out that again, you can go to the offers section on our app where there are some more details um, about Josephine's offers as well. Wonderful. Thanks, Josephine. That's really, really kind of you. Oh, my pleasure. And um, if you have any questions about it um, prior to booking or anything, feel free to reach out via email. I'm happy to answer any questions or just in general about this meditation or meditation as you're trying to incorporate it. Happy to answer your questions. Thank you. We're getting some lovely comments in the chat thread saying that people really enjoyed it and someone dozed off. So that's a good sign. Oh, that is a great sign. It always is. It means you really allowed yourself to let go. Definitely. Amazing. Well, I won't keep people too much longer, um, seeing as everyone's probably in that lovely Zen state. So um, I think we can start. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention, Josephine, before we go? No, not at all. Amazing. All right. Well, a really, really big thank you from us. It's been really wonderful having you. And thank you to everyone for joining. If you want to check out uh, this meditation again and, and replay it, then you can pop over to the playbacks section of our app where you'll be able to find um, this recording in probably a couple of days time, I think. So yeah, do go and check that out again. And thank you again. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, Have a wonderful day. Thank you, and you will log off now. Thank you. Bye-bye.